Si vezi kiniso, si vusele la utembega. Uh, next up, we're going to have uh, uh, Federico, Peter, and uh, Mobizita doing a presentation for us. It's uh, the title is Ah. Now I got it. Infographics, explainer videos, and other formats to unpack complex complex issues. Now, for bigger links is from the IPPR Namibia. Uh, Peter Desler is the program director in Namibia uh, on Southern Africa from the DW Academy. And then we have Mobizi Tamlilo, who is the founder and CEO of Nafuna Africa TV. Gentlemen, it's over to you. Take it away. Good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for the introduction, Nina, and um, we'll dive from the media policy arena straight into um, the issue of how we explain and how we deal with complex issues. So, um, no, let's start with you here. Oh, yeah. Um, you've yeah. been training explanatory videos for the last yes, one and a half, two years. What is yes. that? <laughs> so it's basically um, one of those uh, trainings where we take people through, uh, teach them how to break down complex topics into easy to understand, very short videos that um, are still compelling, are still entertaining, but can still uh, put a point across. So that's the kind of training I've been doing. Okay, and you've brought us a little video Yes, and I've got a little video. So mm -hmm. this video here, mm -hmm. sorry, didn't interrupt you, but I'll say that this video here is uh, the intro to uh, the training. This uh, breaks down is the explainer of the explainer, codenamed the explainer. <laughs> so um, yeah, which just takes you through or takes the potential journalists or participants through um, what what the actual training will look like and what they'll get. Okay, and now I'm pretty sure I messed up the screen sharing. Let's see if, if the sound comes through as well. Okay. Here I am with my newest task as a journalist. I'm producing my very own explainer video. Wow. Research is everything and don't forget the rules of journalism. It's journalism, not poetry. tell that in less than two minutes, stripping it down to the most essential and answering the central questions. I gotta decide what kind of explainer video I want to do. Making an explainer video is like telling a good story, like back in the days when grandma was telling me hers. I can use a protagonist who's got a challenge, tell it like a metaphor. I can surprise my audience, but the most important, I want to make you care about this video. Explainer videos are there to make you really understand something, to make your audience learn. The world is complex. Explain it. Why do we have international sanctions for Zimbabwe? What are treasury bills? There are the visuals to think about. Good music creates the mood with emotions. In every sound, soundbite makes the video come to life. Since I'm doing a video, my language should be short, simple, and colloquial. Once my script is ready, I work on my storyboards. Here they are, the pictures I imagined. And after the editing and the voice recording, it becomes the video I imagined it to be. Okay, let me bring in Frederico Links here from Namibia Fact Check. Frederico, why do you think it's important that we dive into explaining issues? Well, I, I think, I mean, my, my view is just from having, um, you know, being a researcher, being a journalist, is that um, it, it, it's, it's surprising, oh, it shouldn't be actually, but it, it still is, it's, it catches me off guard how much um, of what's happening around us, you know, people 
really don't know um, and and don't have an understanding of. And, and this could be everyday things or topical issues, um, policy issues, um, things that affect people's lives. Um, and, and you'd be surprised, I mean, by the, the, the general lack of understanding in, in, in the public out there. And, and just one example here is if you look at, uh, you know, the situation in Namibia, um, the COVID-19 situation, you know, we are almost two years into the pandemic now. And you still find people, um, a lot of people, um, really aren't clued up about what's happening. Um, you know, in, in, in things that you would have thought by now people would um, know off the heart, you know, things like symptoms, um, things like, um, you know, what's happening on a daily basis around them in terms of infections and, and infection control and so on. Um, and, and just recently, earlier this year, um, Afrobarometer did this, this specific survey, this uh, image that you're looking at here, this graph, this chart, um, it comes from that, uh, that Afrobarometer survey. And it showed that um, you know, based on the amount of um, uh, polluted information that people had been exposed to. Um, I think this is the effect of it. Um, at that point, more than a year into the pandemic, people thought that, you know, prayer was more effective than vaccines. And this was around the time that we in Namibia started our vaccine rollout in March this year. Um, that the survey was done shortly, just shortly before this. Um, and, you know, it, it, it shows that um, what, it, what it tells me about, um, you know, where people are in terms of um, information access is that, um, you know, the, the, the vaccines were never pro uh, properly explained um, in, uh, through, through any sort of cons consistent and comprehensive public information campaign. And um, this has since become sort of uh, what you're looking at here has since become the situation here. Um, and hesitancy um, is uh, vaccine hesitancy, vaccine skepticism is a big problem. And people don't understand um, if, if you talk to people and you try and explain to them what the consequences are of this the sort of um, um, attitude towards uh, COVID-19 and towards vaccines um, and, and, and then explain, you know, sort of um, there are, you know, ripple effect uh, uh, um, issues that need to be considered. The socioeconomic, socioeconomic impacts the, the, uh, of, of, you know, people not understanding the impact of, of vaccines on, on society and also on the other hand, understanding why, how, how hesitancy, how skepticism, how rejection, vaccine rejection um, <laughs> makes things worse. So that's, that's, that, that really tells the story right there. And you deal with mainly disinformation as a fact-checking organization. Do you think that um, explaining issues is kind of the preventive measure to the disinformation, the fake news that you then afterwards have to debunk? Well, it isn't one thing. I mean, explaining helps, um, you know, but, but really um, explaining things to people is, is not the only thing. Um, and, you know, they, they are, I, I always say they are, they are interventions at various levels. Um, so as a fact checker, we, we provide a certain type of intervention and we try and explain things a certain way. Health authorities are supposed to do something else in terms of getting messaging across around vaccines, for instance, and COVID-19, and, and consistently doing that and comprehensively doing that um, so that people are, are well informed um, as you know, the science around COVID-19, around the vaccines evolve. Um, these, these things need to be constantly explained. And it, and, it, and it doesn't fall to, for instance, just um, government, it doesn't, uh, the Ministry of Health, for instance, it doesn't just fall to a fact checker. There are interventions at, 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 in, in other spheres that need to complement what, what each one of us does 
in order for us to, to for, for the communication to be effective, um, whether it's, you know, with, with a more educated urban audience, whether or whether it's with a more um, rural um, and less exposed audience, you need to have the interventions at those various levels and, and, and places to be able to, to, to have an effective uh, communication. And explainers, simple explainers, um, by whoever, you know, whoever is in this sort of communication um, cycle um, and on this landscape, explainers help a tremendous amount. But, you know, explainers, I do an explainer in a certain way. The government does an explainer in a certain way. And we're supposed to be complementing each other and trying to get the messages across. So, I mean, it, it really helps if, if there are other players out there with, with uh, interventions uh, that they can roll out to, to complement the sort of explainers that we do. Yeah. Let me quickly show an example and we can continue talking because it's without sound. But this is um, what Namibia Fact Check produced to um, and spread it on social media in order to um, spread the facts around the AstraZeneca vaccine, which is one of the mainly used vaccines here in Namibia. Um, and um, do you think that this kind of content should come mainly from government and um, from fact-checking sources? Or do you think journalism has a role in explaining things like safety of vaccines, etc.? Yes, I mean, I, I definitely do. I mean, and I have to say thanks, Peter, because uh, you help with a lot with these uh, these explainer videos and so on. Um, yes, I, I do think, um, um, you know, journalists play a role because what we saw, um, what we saw last year, especially was um, sort of your event based reporting where journalists were just reporting um, what the Minister of Health or, or health officials were saying at an event, you know, a, 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 a briefing, a media briefing and so on. Whereas their audiences were encountering all sorts of uh, vaccine related falsehoods and disinformation um, in, in their social media feeds um, and, and on WhatsApp. And, and, and there was a, you, you didn't see um, Namibian media houses or journalists addressing this, this flood of, of disinformation that their audiences were seeing online um, and in social me on social media. Um, so there was this disconnect. The media wasn't where their audiences were. And what happened was that, um, and, and this is you know, sort of classic how um, the, the audience starts, you know, you have these voices in, in, in the audience start shouting that the media is co-opted, the media is part of the scamdemic or the pandemic or whatever, um, and they are just reporting what the government and official sources are saying. They, they're not engaging with where people are uh, informationally. And this was a big problem. And to a large extent, I mean, the Namibian media hasn't uh, um, woken up to this reality. And actually, some of them actually went into the, the business of spreading conspiracy theories, had shows on, on that, that where they were giving airtime to, to all sorts of nonsense. Um, and, and that was problematic. Um, but, you know, some of our media houses have really come around. Um, some have introduced WhatsApp channels where they spread COVID coronavirus related uh, content, credible, uh, factual, um, verified content. Um, whereas others have stuck to the, to the, to the, um, to the sort of reporting they've always been in this event based reporting around bringing, uh, bringing information to the people regarding COVID-19, regarding the COVID-19 vaccines. So the, the, there's a mixed, you know, the, the landscape is sort of mixed in, in terms of how uh, Namibian media have responded to this, to this pandemic. Yeah. Let's have a look of how how we can do the explanation. I'd like to bring Mo back in here as, a, as an animation studio. Um, you obviously do a lot of um, video content. 
Can you talk us through a little bit of the things that um, you think are important when you look at video formats for explanations? Yeah, um, I think certainly. What the um, main for you are now? What the, sorry, I didn't get the last bit. Hello? Now, what, what do you think are the most important formats when you try? Because one of, one of your slogans is, is explaining Africa um, at yeah. Nafuna TV. Um, so what do you think are the, the best formats, the best um, approaches to explaining when you look at your audiences? Right. So I think certainly one of them is going to be platform for me. Um, stuff I've learned over the past two years in other different collaborations even with the DW is that, you know, WhatsApp is obviously a big focus on our uh, explainer video type things. We also have started looking into producing our videos um, using a mobile first approach where um, they're now vertical versus um, horizontal, like how they used to be in like in the classic TV orientation or classic desktop, because a lot of people now are just, you know, um, accessing this content mobile first. Um, we've also, Platform-wise, I uh, have, you know, just the extended use of bot technology just as a delivery tool, just to get um, the videos out there. Um, but certainly, I think, you know, um, engaging storytelling, just making them um, just well produced and engaging. Um, but those other considerations are certainly what come into play um, in, in, in getting the videos out there and in explaining that. But I think also another thing is just, you know, vernacular, another thing that we've learned is producing the videos with, in the vernacular help. Um, because, um, yeah, just to quickly access the audience uh, there and there, you know. Yeah, I've just shared in the um, journalism education WhatsApp group a list of examples um, for different kinds of things because obviously you can do explanation in texts, um, uh, listing, for example, um, issues like the different COVID 19 variants or answering key and essential questions. You can do explanation in graphics using maps, using timelines, comparison, process charts etc and um, videos is the most obvious one and one that we see generally around the world coming um to be um to be very very um much used um we're seeing vox for example in the us producing whole segments of explanatory content around all sorts of things from borders to COVID-19, et cetera. A lot of fact-checking organizations have gone into explanatory videos, um, mm. but we've, we're also seeing that as an important role with um, podcasts um, like uh, the Fact Talk, that mm. uh, Namibia Fact Check looks on the one hand into what is being spread on um, on, in terms of fake news, what to watch out for, but also on the other hand to, for example, look into issues that are coming up, at least here in Namibia, like vaccine mandates and then talking to an expert from, in this case, the Legal Assistance Center and really diving deep into the issue. Is it constitutional? Is it not? What does it mean? How would it affect different um, groups of society, etc.? Um, and we are also uh, seeing the Namibia Media Trust, for example, uh, live an A force and ask experts where journalists can ask their questions and that is more interactive. And then last but not least, a kind of still emerging field um, in terms of explanatory content is all the interactive um, explanatory things where you scroll through explanations, where you have different um, graphics, um, but also interactive things like databases um, on COVID. -19 in the COVID-19 boards, but in the long run, we might even see bots where I can ask my question and self-guide myself in that process of understanding. The WHO, for example, has a, has a bot that they use to, um, to do that. And I think Kubatana, and as, as I've seen Chloe in the chat, they're also using bot technology to go into um, maybe not yet completely explaining, but into didactics, et cetera, where I can structure my content and, and look into how I, as a user, want to engage with my, my personal level of, of un um, So here, for example, um, some words from, uh, from uh, Nafuna TV, there's this, and you mentioned the vernacular languages. 
Um, this is the Ndebele version of a video um, that you've produced in the beginning of the, of the Corona pandemic, where you looked at what uh, everyone should do in terms of sanitizing, mask wearing, etc. And that one you've produced in Shona, Ndebele, and in English. And on the right hand, we see an explainer on treasury bills. I think the monetary policy issue is always a thing that you need to explain in Zimbabwe. And, um, Very much so. <laughs> here also, um, done in a Twitter, but then also questions and input into different sections but also short um, content that is animated, um, that is being used on social media, use text and um, audio in terms of the, um, of the fact talk in terms of podcasts. Now, quick question to the audience, and I would please like you to um, use your reaction buttons that you find on the lower side of your, um, of your Zoom call, if you, how do you like an explanation? When do you understand an explanation that is given to you? If it uses pure facts, if it makes you laugh, if it gives you emotions, or if it engages you, and you see the button, and I would uh, like every one of you just to um, quickly, it's on that reactions button, and use that button to say, okay, what, what I like in terms of my explanation is this, and, uh, yeah, no one wants to be engaged. I'm not sure if I can see it right now. Yeah, I, I, I was kind of sure that Frederico wanted pure facts. Okay, I'm not sure if it's because of my um, screen and sharing that I don't see any reactions or because my explanation was really uh, bad, um, but I'll, I'll try to improve on that for the next time. But what we usually see when we ask these questions in, in workshops is that it is actually very difficult. Some people like humor, some people like uh, to be engaged interactively, some people like Frederico like the pure facts, and others need to, um, to go into the emotions. And that brings me over to um, one of the things that Nafuna does a lot. Um, you use characters to explain. No, why is that? Why do you think that helps people understand? And one of your key characters is the one we see here in front, which is Angry Moana, um, which is a, a story that that you that you developed and where you're just now, I think, launching the the second um, season, and that you used to also share short explanations. Now, Mo has left. I'm sure he'll come back, but as in, I'll just skip to the next question and come back to this once No is back. Um, Frederico, when we train, when yeah, we, yeah. you've been training mainly fact checking and how to explain these things. What do uh, you uh, find is one of the main challenges when it comes to the journalism education around explaining and fact checking? Well, I mean, I, I think this is a, an, an issue everywhere, basically, um, not just here in Namibia or in Africa. And, and that's the issue of, of numeracy in newsrooms. Um, you know, you find a lot of journalists struggle to, um, struggle to interpret, uh, struggle to work with numbers and statistics and the like. And more often than not, you know, they get things wrong. Um, so, I mean, something like data journalism has still really take off uh, in our newsrooms here. Um, you don't see many infographics. You don't see um, really the, the, the creative use of, of online uh, graphic uh, design tools. Um, so, I mean, numeracy um engaging with numbers is a big problem that's that's a challenge um and and that's something that um will, will take a while to overcome i think um and yeah um the other the other challenge i think is um you know speaking to people in the, in the languages that they understand very often we struggle with um people 
even even people who speak a particular language, uh, a particular indigenous language, um, don't feel comfortable writing in that language, or or you know interpreting something into that language because you you might have somebody who has um, who has lived most of their life in the city speaks a certain language, but that language is influenced by the other languages that they uh, uh, have grown up with in, in a specific community. Um, and so when you ask them to write in, in that language that is their home language, is their indigenous language, um, they might not be able to, to be able to communicate effectively in, in the language because their um, their language uh, or their version of, of that specific language differs from, say, instance, how people in in rural villages uh, speak. Um, so there's there's that as well, um, you know. And then there are things like um, uh, access to information, access to data, to updated information, to updated um, credible data, which is, is is also a problem. I mean, if you if you if you're going to have explainers that um, really um, make use of 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 you know data to enrich your 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 explanations, um, then you need credible, verified, up to date data, and this is something that is a problem. I mean, if you look at um, uh, one of the issues that within the African fact checking community that that always surfaces is is this issue of um, having credible data, and especially in times like these, times of emergency, such as the COVID-19 pandemic, having access to credible, up-to-date data um, that uh, uh, can inform, you know, and, and really um, help us build a picture if we're going to do explainers, um, having access to that sort of data. So that's, that's another um, another issue, mm -hmm. um, and and we constantly yeah. have to uh, rely on on data from other places, you know, around yeah. vaccines and and the like, um, instead of having data locally available data that we can reference. So I mean, you know, there are some others, but I'd say um, in terms of, of fact checking and, and in terms of uh, um, you know uh, journalism in general, um, these are sort of issues that that affect. Um, um, you know how newsrooms respond and how newsrooms how effective newsrooms can be in in explaining okay. complex issues to to in, to the audiences. Yeah, I think we still haven't managed to reconnect more. But um, just to share some of the things we've discussed before, one of the core struggles that he also saw were to keep it simple and to really boil down the core of the understanding into a simple message, then tell a story that people can relate to in order to foster understanding. And as a final note, um, here are our three takeaways. What do students, learners and journalism need to learn when it comes to, to good explanations and, and fostering an understanding for people? Um, and I think that let's first, go first one is with you. You know that that first one is correct there. That first yellow yellow box there. Understand the issue because if you if you look at a lot of stories, um, I mean, irrespective of what the issue is that is is being covered, you you very quickly realize that um, you know whether a, a a journalist understands the specific topic they're writing about or whether they are just reporting, you know, reporting something somebody else said. And, and, and very often that's very evident where, you know, obvious questions aren't being asked, um, obvious um, um, angles aren't being brought in. Um, if you really understand an issue, if you have, um, you know, and, and that's not to say that you should be, have an in-depth knowledge about it, uh, all and every issue, no. Um, but if you're going to write about something, if you're going to report on something, you have to understand it. Otherwise, you can't, uh, you know, convey the essence of what you're trying to convey um, if you don't understand it. Um, and, and, and that's very obvious in, you know, a lot of our newsrooms are now staffed with interns and, 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 and the like. And so there's um, a, an issue of experience and exposure and um, 
in, in, in the newsrooms that you see coming through the reporting, which is oftentimes very shallow on, on very important issues. And I think that connects to the second one. If you understand the issue, then you can tell a story. Then you can boil it down to something, an example that people can relate to, a character that the audience can relate to and that takes them through the step-by-step step, um, in small, understandable steps through an issue that might be very complex. And then last but least, um, this is where to, to come in, um, visualizing it, making sometimes the invisible even visible. I mean, obvious example at the moment is the COVID-19 vaccine. We all can't see how they work, but we can visualize that by animating things, by showing images, by using metaphors. Um, but to keep that simple and um, to, to really boil it down to the essence, and that leads me to finally opening the round of questions. I don't think that Mumo has managed to connect back to us, um, mm -hmm. but you can also ask questions up. in the WhatsApp group. Yeah, there's a hand up there. Um, um, Musa Bayana. Hi, good morning or good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thank you very much. These are very, very useful discussions that we're having. Um, I, I felt compelled to put up my hand not so much to ask a question, but perhaps to help colleagues because um, the previous presenter uh, mentioned the difficulty of finding updated information on COVID-19 on the continent. So I am with the African Union and I thought it would be helpful to colleagues who are listening to know that there is a source of updated continental information um, that is updated on a daily basis, at least twice a day, and it is available at www.africacdc.org. And um, if you go to that website, you find the latest epidemiological situation, for example, the number of infections as of that particular day, uh, the number of people who've died in a Africa, um, the number of recoveries uh, compared with uh, the international averages. You also find uh, all the information on vaccinations, how many vaccinations have come into the continent, how many have actually been um, administered into people's hands, and there's a breakdown by country, which country has received how many vaccinations or from where and what type of vaccinations where we are in terms of um, uh, reaching the target of vaccinating 70% of the population of Africa. So you find all that. You also find a site that is called Trusted Travel that advises people on, um, you know, the, the, the regulations regarding COVID-19 in different countries. That would then help you to decide before you leave your destination, at least you will know what is expected in the country that you are going to. So these are some of the resources that I thought perhaps I should um, just uh, throw uh, to colleagues uh, with regards to access to information on COVID-19. Thank you so much. And I Thank just you. want to say, I mean, we, we uh, Peter, in, in our training, we always, you know, point our participants to, you know, the Africa CDC, the, the World Health Organization, Africa uh, 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 Region Office, um, um, and, you know, the World Health Organization. Those are sort of the standard, because we also want to expose, you know, our local uh, journalists, our local fact checkers to, you know, these are continental resources uh, or sources that you can go to that actually give you a, 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 a comprehensive view of what's happening across the continent, for instance, in, 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 in the specific context of COVID-19. So we do, you know, have uh, the Africa CDC down as one of our, and also, I mean, because a lot of the, a lot of the disinformation out there, you know, says, you know, it's, it's, 
uh, uh, you know, why should we listen to the Europeans and Americans? There's this distrust. Um, why, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they're they about uh, uh, population control and, and depopulating Africa. But if we can say, look, these are African scientists who are saying these things. Go to the Africa CDC, see what they are saying on this. Um, um, and, 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 and we link to these documents from the Africa CDC and, and the World Health Organization Africa region office um, about vaccines and about you know, guidance on, on, on health issues in the COVID-19 pandemic so that they can see that these are African scientists who are saying this, African scientists who are giving this guidance. So it's not you know, uh, the imperialists uh, or whoever who are trying to depopulate and recolonize the continent. So it's important that we have these local sources that we can point people to um, uh, when it comes to uh, data. Yes, Nina, Patrick, do we have any questions from the chat? Well, no questions, not really, but uh, a lot of people just saying that it's a really interesting discussion. I actually do have one question, uh, and perhaps you I can just... I knew you would. <laughs> an amazing job, Peter, with asking all the questions to <laughs> post to Federico anyhow. Um, but this, I just wanted to know, Federico, in the beginning of your presentation, it says, uh, you did a question where you asked um, about the effectiveness of prayer versus vaccine. 46% of the um, in participants for that uh, question or survey were in favor of prayer as, you know, their mechanism against, you know, having to foresee from COVID-19 or more effective than the vaccine would be against COVID-19. When it comes to such a complex and, and um, complex and almost sensitive topic such as or you know such as religion, how do you use you know how does an explainer video then sway or alter uh, one's understanding you know of a matter of this nature when it comes to the more sensitive issues and topics such as uh, you know religion uh, versus the vaccine or prayer versus the vaccine. So, so I, I don't think an explainer video will do that. Uh, I don't think that's, that's, that's what you have to go for. In that case, I, I, my, my uh, intuition would be to say, you need a religious leader or religious leaders to, you know, to come on board, to step forward and really talk to um, you know, your, your, your religious audience about vaccines, about COVID-19, try and get it across to people that, um, look people, prayer is good, but we, we also need to take um, other precautions. And, and, and that means we need to get vaccinated, but you need that, you need that sort of intervention from trusted, uh, credible, um, authoritative, um, uh, uh, um, voices within the religious community, within the, the, the faith-based uh, community. Um, not me, um, of course. I mean, um, I, I'm not that person, so I can't be the one making, I can make an explainer, of course, whether it will have effect. Does, you know, I, can, I can probably guarantee it won't have any effect on, on that sort of belief system. Um, that 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 thinks prayer is is more effective against uh, COVID nineteen than than uh, 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 the vaccines or any other medical interventions. So I mean, you need you need sort of horses for courses. You need interventions that speak to the specific context, um, and 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 you know that can explain to people why uh, and how they they should uh, uh, um, uh, engage with with the issues. And, and what I think issues are. If, I, if I can come in here a bit, because I think the role of explaining in journalism and in public discourse is to bring in the basis on to to have a, a good understanding, and then on that basis we can have an open dialogue where we can um, look at the question with from various angles, but based on a on a good understanding of the issue. 
And I think that is where, where I think there's a big potential still for, for journalism in, in Southern Africa to really go into these issues, not only when it comes to disinformation and to, to the current pandemic. It is the obvious thing because it has so many complex topics that, that, that need understanding. But if we look at, um, uh, we've had the, the, the fish rod scandal in um, in Namibia, we are having fuel cartels in, in Zimbabwe, we're having um, legal issues around elections, all of these things, in order to be able to discuss them and find a solution, need an understanding of complex procedures, kickbacks in the case of the fish rod, um, briberies, um, how do the fuel cartels in Zimbabwe actually work to keep um, prices up or uh, supply low? Um, the treasury bills that we saw as an example, how does that actually work? How does that affect me? All of these things need to be explained in order to then take part in that political or social debate. And I think there's a, um, a big potential for, for journalism to really do that. And it is not that difficult. The, Explain a video that we've shown on the AstraZeneca vaccine is actually made um, using a PowerPoint and exporting that into, into a video. It's, it doesn't require you to do that kind of animation that Nafuna TV does, where you create characters and animate them in a, in a complex format, but there are actually a lot of ways to do that. Podcasts where you get an expert into the studio and dive deep into an issue step by step, unpacking the complex issues help a lot. And they can go very nicely with a lot of content and you can repeat them. I think there's a big potential for journalism to really um, go into that field to explain things and deliver a better, better service to the audiences. Awesome. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much, Federico. Would you like to add something? Yeah, I mean, I, I just like to add to what Peter said that, I mean, we, all, we have to be sensitive um, to, to where people are informationally. Um, so, I mean, um, taking complex issues such as people's religious beliefs, for instance, you know, you, you, uh, these are emotive, sens sensitive areas of, in, in people's lives. Um, so, I mean, we need to, we need to, um, when we do explain this, speak to that. But, you know, if, as I said, if, if, I, if I go to a, a credible authoritative religious um, um, person to, to convey a message, then I need to be able to back them up with the facts for them to ha have readily available, have the information that would make their case easier. Um, and, 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 and help them to persuade people. So, you know, uh, um, we, if, if people, and, and we've seen this, we've actually had people come back to us and say, you know what, this, this particular, particular graphic or, or explainer, it really helped me in, in, in meeting people um, uh, and, and meeting their questions where, where they are. And, um, it helped me to, to, to answer those questions that they might have had. We've had people come back to us and, 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 and say that sort of thing, give that sort of testimony, if you will. So, you know, it, it backing up those voices, backing up journalists, putting it out there. We have a WhatsApp group where we interact with journalists, where we put out fact checks uh, and explainers um, and, and our, some of our, our, our information, our explainer videos and so on where they themselves can interact with the information and where they can ask us questions. Um, so uh, in, in that sense, we also serve as sort of a, 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 a backup to, to improving um, journalistic reporting um, in newsrooms for, for, for some journalists. So, I mean, that sort of, uh, um, you know, you, you, you have to be able to provide that sort of backing to um, if, if you want the facts to get across, if you want credible information to get across, you have to be able to provide that sort of service. There's a hand up, Peter. Yeah. Well, I think that's all. I don't see Bindi. Any... Do you have a name in brief? Bindi okay. Abbas has his hand up. 
Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Oh, great. Thank you so much for putting this together. Congrats to NMT for the policy book handbook. Uh, my question, nice to see you, Peter, again. And uh, my question goes to Fed, Federico. Um, for your trainings around fact-checking, um, how do people get, do you have any online resources that you share with people or uh, if someone wants to work with you or training young journalists, they have to get in touch and deal with you direct. Because um, one of the things I've realized, uh, fact-checking is, we, we've been doing fact-checking trainings for our fellowship program here in Uganda um, with Africa Check. And because the skill is highly limited, uh, it's really hard to get to spread it across other institutions or universities. So I'm curious to know if you've put in place either an online system or you're thinking about that where uh, people can access your skills. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's definitely something um, sort of on our to-do list is to have these online resources that people, I mean, I, I use a lot of the resources of first draft i don't know if you're aware of them i use a lot of the resources of africa check because i also have a relationship with 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 africa check at the a fact check so um we use a lot of their resources online resources um and then i mean we 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 try and 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 to um provide um you know mostly here in the movie in person training um, it's a bit difficult to do a five-day social media and fact-checking training, a three-day social media and fact-checking training workshop just online. Um, so it, it, it's preferable that it's, that it's you know, in person. Uh, um, but uh, I also point people to online resources such as the, 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 you know, the, the online courses that uh, organizations such as Code for Africa have with PESA check in East Africa. Um, those are really valuable uh, resources. Um, and, you know, so there's a lot happening that we can tap into here um, and that I sort of market on social media whenever there are online trainings available. Uh, at the moment, we don't have any of our own, but we're looking at going there um, from next year onwards, um, having some online training videos uh, available uh, publicly and having a, a, um, a YouTube channel that we can populate over time with, with training resources. Um, what, what we mostly do is we, we put out a, 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 a public call or we send an invitation to newsrooms um, or to, if, if, it's, if we decide to do journalism uh, trainees or students to the universities here and, and invite them to see if any of the students are interested, usually the response is very good. Or we put out a call on our civil society networks here um, to train civil society, um, um, people in civil society on fact checking and verification. So, um, so we're, we're pretty much tapped into those networks and, and, and have uh, uh, standing and established ourselves so that if we put out these calls if we, for, for training that people actually do apply in large numbers. And of course, uh, our workshops are, are designed for 12 to 15 people. So we don't, you know, we, we, we don't, um, it's, a, it's a very small um, training uh, um, uh, space, um, but I mean, we've over over time we've uh, engaged with many people and trained many people, and hopefully these skills um, um, are getting out there. And people, we've had people from community radio stations um, that we've trained. So hopefully, over time, this translates into better fact checking at community media levels around the country. So there are different different things we try and do and, and, and try and support them also after the training. Um, if, if there are um, specific things that they want us to help them with in terms of fact checking or verification, then we can provide that sort of support. So it's, it's still a work in progress, how we continue forward, how we, and you know, look at Peter, he's laughing at me there. 
uh, how we <laughs> no i'm i'm just laughing because 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 nina is 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 trying to <laughs> to, <laughs> to, yeah. to 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 give people a break and right. i think she's, okay. she's quite trying all right but, sorry you know, um, Abbas, um, I, I think we we're, we're happy to connect you with frederico um because i think there's there's a lot that you can can share in terms of experience when it comes to training on fact checking and also with no and maybe even also kubatana when it comes to explaining content etc um i think we can continue that conversation either over the break or in in the future that's no problem and um, I'm you. I'm not sure if if we um, if we I think I think the 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 DJ lost its patience with us uh, going 15 minutes even over the break. We can partly blame it on on Zoe and the UNESCO, but I think um, let's let's give people a break. Siveza ikiniso, sivuselela ukutembega.